Well, good morning, community. Come on, stand on your feet as we go higher and praise on this morning. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. Yeah. You said your glory above the heavens and the earth.
thank you this morning. Lord, you've been so good to us. Lord, we cannot do this without you. Lord, we wouldn't want to. We wouldn't know how to. Lord, we say thank you for the many blessings. Lord, you, you brought us a mighty long way. Throughout this week, you blessed us to see friends. You blessed us to see family. You blessed us to travel across the land. Lord, we say thank you. We love you. And we need you. Amen, amen. Whether you join us online or in person, if you're joining us online, please hit the share button. Let's do better than that. Good morning. Good morning. Amen. I want to welcome all of you who are in-house, and I welcome the people online and the people at the Covington campus who are watching this right now by video. God bless all of you. Thank God for the technology. As I said to a, to a church on Sunday where I installed a pastor, and that is that a church that is not doing ministry in and for the future has no future. Amen. And at this particular church, it was very timely because they do not even have a platform for online giving. The only way to give is to bring the check or your cash by the church. That's not ministry for the future. Met with the pastor this week, and he shared with me that he doesn't think they're going to go online. I said, I mean, that's just silly. That's ministry in the future. So, thank God for all that he has given us, and I thank God for all of you at, at our, both of the campuses, all three of them, and the people online who are using technology for the glory of God. Thank you for embracing it. Give God a hand. Amen. <laughs> Amen. All right. Y'all had a great Thanksgiving? Yeah, somebody asked me, did I overeat? I told him, of course not. You can't overeat when you just don't stop eating. <laughs> I ate continuously. Amen. All right. It was so good. Good to be with family. I thought about that. Without Thanksgiving and Christmas, a whole lot of people would not uh, be with their family. So it's just a good thing. It's a great time of year to give God thanks and praise for all he has done and continues to do. And a great blessing for me today regarding family is to see uh, Kevin, Abby, Sophia, uh, Jonathan, and Chris on the same pew, praising the Lord. Amen. And the best looking one of them in this family is Sophia. Amen. <laughs> but what a great sight to see generations worshiping and serving the Lord together. Doesn't get any better than that. Amen. Amen. Well, God bless you. They told me I have to uh, 
really be on time today and I'm going to submit and be on time because of the online stream back over to the Covington campus. All right, so for somebody in the sound booth, amen, y'all need to give me a clock or something that says it because without that, I might preach two hours. Amen? amen. <laughs> Father, we love you. Thank you for our time together today. You're an awesome God. Thank you for our Thanksgiving, this time when we stop to reflect and give you honor and glory for your goodness in our lives. We thank you today. We love you. Thank you for what you're going to do today that with the people online, with the people at the Covington campus, and with the folk who are in person here. Would you open our ears that we might hear and open our hearts to accept your specific message to us today. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, all right. Uh, we're in this series, the last day today is today, entitled Enemies of Gratitude. Today, the enemy of gratitude is nostalgia. Now, that's such a big word, I can't even say it right. <laughs> but what is nostalgia? Let me read the definition. A sentiment or wistful yearning for the happiness felt in a former place, time, or situation. Let me read it again. A sentimental or wistful learning for the happiness felt in a former place, time, or situation. Amen. Sentimental. Wistful yearning for a different time a former place or a former season. Nostalgia can be an enemy of gratitude. Why? Because if we aren't careful in nostalgia, amen, we can be unable to enjoy or thankful, be thankful about where we are because we continue to look back at what in our mind was. You can't be grateful, or you won't be, and feel blessed and enjoy where you are because you keep looking back to where you've been. It can be an enemy of gratitude. And a lot of times, it's not necessarily where we were in the past, it's just how we choose to remember it. Yeah. I remember talking with my grandfather, and I said, Papa, you remember the good old days, huh? He said, what good old days? He said, I had to go pump my water, bring it inside, heat it on the stove to bathe in a number three tin tub. The outhouse was outside. He said they didn't have any chickens. Oh, you could go by. I had to wring my own chickens' necks and freak, cook them. <laughs> and he said, what good old days? Well, I said that because I heard so many people of his generation talk about the good old days. Nostalgia. Nostalgia. Where are you in your mind? Are you still back in the good old days? Another season of life, another place, another situation that you keep remembering that to you in your mind was so great that you can't enjoy and be thankful for where you are because you keep going back to where it was in your mind. Where it was for you in life. Yeah, in life. What, what, what? Let me say this. Every season of life, every time period, every situation, every environment, every circumstance has its own set of challenges. 
But so many times, especially those of us who are the people of faith, we forget to see the challenges. We just choose to remember the good stuff. You know, like in my marriage, I have to be careful because I can remember when Maria and I first got married. Amen. And I'd pull in the driveway and I would see her looking to see who it was. And in my mind, when she saw who it was, those were great times. Because she'd walk away from the window, in my mind, and run through the house, my baby's home, my baby's home. <laughs> That's how I remember it. Amen. So now, things are a little different. Amen. If I tell her now that I'm going out of town, she used to ask, for how long? Now she says, when? <laughs> <laughs> Nostalgia. Well, we remember the good or the way we choose to remember marriage and relationships and life and family. Well, we remember only the good as we perceive it in those seasons. And a whole lot of people, amen, cannot enjoy or be thankful for where they are and definitely not for where they're going because they're locked into their perception of where they were. They can't be grateful for where they are. I remember a good friend of mine, Charles, who passed away, and I said to him, Charles, you're in your golden years. If you've heard that term, golden years, say amen. amen. Even online and at the other campus, golden years. I said, man, Charles, you're in your golden years, huh? I said, what, golden? He said, I'm sick every day. I can barely get around. I can't travel. I don't have any appetite. I'm taking almost 18 pills a day. He said, and I got all this other stuff going on. I don't know who named this golden. How do you perceive things? Amen. Watch this. Nostalgia is about remembering only the good that you choose to shape. And wishing for that, so much so that you're having a difficult time being grateful or thankful for where you are right now. Enemies of gratitude. There are two birds that fly over uh, that are part of uh, the desert, California desert specifically. Buzzards and hummingbirds. The buzzards, amen, fly looking for rotting meat. And that's all they see. The hummingbirds fly looking for cactus, little flowers on the cactus. And that's what they see. The reason the buzzards only see rotting meat is because that's what they're looking for. The reason the hummingbirds see the little cactus flowers because that's what they're looking for. Let me ask you, this Sunday after Thanksgiving, 2021, in your life, could it be that the thing you're seeing is or are only the things you're looking for? And could it be that it's difficult for you to appreciate, no matter what's going on, be thankful in your life for where you are because you keep looking back, looking for the past. The past is gone. It's over. The horse is dead. Take the saddle off. Go home. Find another horse. What are you looking for? Rotting meat? Or flowers. 
What are you looking for? A return to what you perceived was awesome and good and great? Or are you looking at where you are now? And most of all, looking not to your past, but to your future. Let's go to the word of God. Numbers 14. That night, all the members of the community raised their voices and wept aloud. Let me set the stage. Israel was in slavery. Horrible slavery. They prayed to God to set them free. The Lord sent in Moses and did some things and they were free. And then he took them, amen, out into the desert and delivered them from Pharaoh and his army. He then provided meals for 600,000 people. Gave them water out of a rock. When they got tired of the little manna, they called it, and said they wanted some meat, he sent them quails until they could not eat anymore. He protected them from their enemies. And now they're on their way. They're real close to the promised land. In Numbers 13, Moses sent out the spies to the promised land. There were 12 of them. Ten of the spies came back and said, the land is just like God said, but they've got some gigantic warriors over there. Two of them came back and said, it's just like God said, Caleb and Joshua, but even though those giants are over there, God is with us, and we're going to be all right. Well, the people only heard the negative report. Amen. So what did they do? That night, all the members of the community raised their voices and wept aloud. They started crying. Because the only thing they heard was the negative report. All the Israelites grumbled against Moses and Aaron, and the whole assembly said to them, if only we had died in Egypt or in this wilderness. What? The same Egypt where you were getting whipped? The same Egypt where you didn't have adequate housing? The same Egypt where the Pharaoh required you to make bricks without straw, the same Egypt that you begged God to release you from, now you wish you had died in that Egypt. See? For some reason, it's good now. Yeah. What did they say? We wish God had killed us. Why? Because if he had killed us, we would not be here. And what are they saying? What are they saying? Life was better in Egypt. How was it better? How was it better? But in their mind, it was better now. They were being nostalgic. What about you? You have any situations? that you keep dwelling on, that the devil has you locked down on, that you're focused on about this great season, this great time in your life. And now you're in a different space, amen, sometimes because of your own choice or other people's choices or whatever, where now all you can say is, oh, man, if I just stay back there. That's what they were saying. If I, if, I, if I was just, if I had just lived there, and they'd forgotten all the stuff that went with living there. Verse 3. Why is the Lord bringing us to this land only to let us fall by the sword? They're going to kill us all. <laughs> Some people listen to me right now online at the other campus and in here. Amen. You've already decided and the devil has you believing that the space where you are in life right now is the worst one. It's killing your spirit. It's killing your soul. It's killing your future. It's a matter of what you're focused on.
because what I used to have was so much better than this. Really. Watch this. Wouldn't it be better for us to go back to Egypt? We want to go back to where we were slaves. And when you read Numbers 11 and 12, what they said was, when we were in Egypt, we had cucumbers, all we wanted to eat. We had fish, all we wanted to eat. We had garlic and leeks and onions. and Man, life was good back then because we could eat anything we wanted. They remembered the good. They forgot the sting of the whip. They forgot working sun up to sundown and later. What, wouldn't, we, what, wouldn't it be better for us to go back to Egypt? How many folk listening to me this morning, the devil's convinced you that there was a time in your life, amen, where right now you kind of wish you were back in Egypt. For some people, <laughs> and don't be, be careful how you respond, you're married to a relationship with or maybe sitting next to somebody and the devil's convinced you, oh, you need to go back to Egypt before you met them. Really? Really? They said to each other, we should choose a leader and go back to Egypt. We have Christians on all of the campuses who are nostalgic. They can't enjoy where we are now because they keep looking back. They won't come to church, a lot of them in person, because they are waiting for a church to come back. Church isn't coming back as you saw it. It's over. There's been a seismic shift to a new kind of church. New form of church. For me, amen, if I were to go back, I would go back to when you had a full choir. And I was leading them and me and the devil had a tussle and I won. I remember going through a season where I craved the old, old hymns. And that's what, what I grew up on. That's what I wanted. And I'm waiting and I'm going to do everything I can to bring all of that back totally. And then one Sunday, I had Will do one of them. And I'm listening to it. I said, man, that's just a bunch of racket. <laughs> Are you waiting for church to come back online? Are you waiting for it to be and look like it used to look? Is that why you can't be thankful for us being in a place where online we can reach the world? Well, online we have music geared to the times but anchored in the rock. Where are you? Are you, amen, waiting, waiting, waiting because you have this ideal back in the past of what church should look like, what family should be like. Families don't look like they used to look and they never will. It's over. Amen. Looking back, the story is told of little Joy, whose parents had a farm, grandmother had a farm, and she gave him a slingshot. Well, he went out to shoot birds and couldn't kill any. And on the way back onto the farm, he noticed in the yard his grandmother's prized duck. Out comes the slingshot, kills the duck. Hot, buries it, hides it, and buries it. Well, his sister saw him kill the duck. 
So they're at the dinner table, and she had let him know, I saw you kill that duck. Grandma says, Sally, would you help me with the dishes? She says, I would, Grandma, but Joy is the one who wants to help you. <laughs> the next day, Grandpa says, let's go fishing. Grandma says, yeah, that's fine, but Sally, you stay here and help me prepare the lunch. She said, no, Grandma, I would, but Joy wants to help you fix the lunch. Joy saw that Sally would blackmail him for the rest of his life. So he went and told Grandma, I killed your duck. She said, yeah, I know, I saw you when you shot it. <laughs> but I forgive you. But I got a question for you. How long are you, were you going to allow Sally to make you her personal slave? Let me ask you, how long will you allow the devil to keep you locked into a perceived past? How long before you move forward? How long before you accept where you are and thank God, amen, for where you are and thank God for your future, amen, amen, because you keep Refusing to do that because you're looking back at the past, your perception. And the devil has you enslaved because you keep wishing for your perception of what was good in the past. How long? The Bible says this. Then Moses and Aaron fell down in front, face down in front of the whole Israelite assembly gathered there. Joshua, son of Nun, and Caleb, son of Jephunneh, <laughs> who were among those who explored the land, tore their clothes. Amen. Y'all can tell I'm great at diction. Amen and said to the entire Israelite assembly, the land we passed through and explored is exceedingly good. And if the Lord is pleased with us, he will lead us into that land, a land flowing with milk and honey, and will give it to us. Stop focusing on where we've been. Change your focus to where God's going to take us. Somebody ought to hear that. Stop allowing the devil to focus you in on where you've been. Move to focusing in on where God can, wants to, and will take you. Watch this. So they're complaining. They refuse to do anything. They want to go back to Egypt. God got upset with them. Moses had to pray for them. God said, all I've done for them. See, I'm going to kill them all right now. They don't have to go into the promised land. I can take care of that. Moses begs God to forgive them. The Lord replied, I have forgiven them as you ask. Nevertheless, as surely as I live and as surely as the glory of the Lord fills the whole earth, not one of those who saw my glory and the signs I performed in in Egypt and in the wilderness, but who disobeyed me and tested me ten times, not one of them will ever see the land I promised on oath to their ancestors. Not one. What's God saying? I forgive them, but because of their focus on the past, they miss their blessing. They're forgiven but they are not going into the promised land because of their focus. They miss their blessing. Let me ask you, do you sit here today or online or at the other campus, forgiven by Jesus, saved, going to heaven, 
But because of your nostalgia, because of your focus on your perception of what things need to go back to, you're missing your blessing right where you are. God says, I forgive them, but they miss their blessing. They will not see the land of milk and honey. Not going to happen. I know some folk <laughs> with old cars in their yard, rusted out snake pits. And you say, what about that car? Man, let me tell you. <laughs> oh, me and that car back in the day. I know folk where I've negotiated at before and after funerals who argue about an old refrigerator in the backyard. That was mama's refrigerator. I remember when she used to open it. Why, why don't you get rid of it? Oh, no. That was my mama's. Really? Really? Listen to me. When I preach, every message, every message, I want it to be fresh bread, no stale bread. No past messages. Other pastors have file cabinets of messages. I don't have any. I don't keep them. I don't go back to them. I want fresh bread. Fresh bread. Because for me, in teaching and preaching, it's not about Amen, what God said to me and you all yesterday is does God have a word for today? What is the word for this Sunday? Amen. I know guys who just go dust off old sermons. This was a good one. Dust it off. This one worked. Nostalgia. Nostalgia. What are you hanging on to that you need to get rid of? Now, when I say this, Marie, I know you're watching. You need to forgive me in advance. When we got married, you know, when we were dating, the girl was so in love. I had a Volkswagen. She used to straddle the stick shift and me and her could fit on the same driver's seat. Now every time I mention that to her, she says, I don't know who that was, but that wasn't me. <laughs> I remember it was her. <laughs> You can't live in that day. You can't. You can, but you shouldn't. As I close, forget the former things. Everybody repeat that. What does it say? God say, do what with them? Stick to them. Hold on to them. Bathe in them. Soak in them. Relish in them. What's he say about them? Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the... It's over! It's gone. Nineteen. See, I am doing a new thing. You so locked into what I did already 
And what you perceive was so wonderful that you're missing what I'm doing right now. I got some good stuff going on in your life right now that you aren't grateful for because you're totally focused on trying to go back to what I did before. I'm doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? No. Why? I'm locked in. I'm nostalgic. I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. I'm taking your wasteland and creating streams. I'm making a way in the wilderness for you. But you keep missing it because you keep wanting what you had or what you perceived what you had to be. The Apostle Paul says this, brothers and sisters, that's you and me. That's Christ followers. I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it but one thing I do, everybody say one thing. He was a one thing guy. Forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead. He said, what's my focus? What's ahead? What's ahead? One thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is where? I close with this. I could be nostalgic and break my neck. I did not play football in high school, although I'm built like a lineman now. I was a great gymnast. I was. Oh, oh, y'all laughing at the brother, okay. I says, right, I could, I did the bars and the horse and the rings and, <laughs> hey amen, I was, I don't know, I may have been better than some mound bows, you know. <laughs> <laughs> now watch this, right, won awards, and, oh man, I was good. And my favorite activity back then was walking on my hands. When my kids were young, they would tell you I would walk through the house on my hands. That's been 40 years ago. And then every now and then, <laughs> I think about how great I was and how I could walk on my hands. And about 10 years ago, I got real nostalgic Something said, you can do it. <laughs> you that good. It was that good. Do it. I did this and hit the ground, flipped over, and was in a chiropractor for four months with my neck. So where are you now, Pastor? I'm living where I am. I'm grateful for where I am. I'm blessed where I am. Where are you, Pastor? Crookedly, I can put one foot ahead of the other. I'm thankful. So what are you working on? I'm working on my future. Not my past, but what? What is my future? I want to be able to walk without wobbling. You ever notice those of us who have extra girth? 
We don't go heel to toe. We go side to side. <laughs> Let's pray. Father, we love you. Thank you for thanksgiving. Thank you for gratitude. Free us today. Help us to be thankful and enjoy where we are and where we're going instead of living in nostalgia about what we perceive we've been. Free us today. We thank you, Lord. We love you and we bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's celebrate God. Hey. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many of you know that we serve a great God? Texting the word connect to 833-447-0504. If you're there or if you're here in the service and you want to know how to get connected to community church, whether it's you want to serve, become a member, get baptized, join a community group, you can sign up today. And you can also do that by texting the word connect to 833-447-0504 on the Covenant campus or 833-581-0023 on the Slidell campus. Today is growth track number four, worship consistently. If you want to join that growth track today, you can sign up either online and they'll send you a link to join the class today. Also, don't forget, throughout this month and until December 20th, we're having a Christmas outreach. We're calling it Adopt a Child. This is where our James ministry comes together. They accept gifts that are unwrapped. We prefer them to be new so that we can bless the less fortunate in this community. If you're saying, I don't know how to shop for a child, don't want to. We also accept the monetary donations for our people to go out and buy the gifts, bring them back, wrap them up, and give them to a child. If you want more information on Adopt a Child, you can contact me at your person at 985-893-5800. Eight one. Today, as we prepare for our offering, I know that some give automated, and I say thank you for that. 
We know that some still give by text. If you want to text to give, you can text to give at 833-447-0504 on the Covenant Campus or 833-581-0023 on the Slidell Campus. We also have cash that you can drop in the back in the boxes or check. You can do that in the service. Or you can also send your donations. And as we're giving donations, do not forget our pastor. Although he's not here, we still want to bless him with a love offering. You can also do that by mail. You can mail it to 1148 North Columbia, Covington, Louisiana, 70433. Or for the Slidell campus, 57209 Allen Road, Slidell, Louisiana, 70461. As we pray, Father God, Lord, we love you. We just ask that we are obedient to give what you have put on our hearts to give. Lord, as we go through this day, Lord, we just thank you for being able to give. Some of them are not, some of us are not, but Lord, we just say thank you for being able to give. Your darling Jesus, Jesus Christ's name I pray, amen. So next Sunday, come out and meet Elsa as we kick off our Christmas at the movies. As we are dismissed, please wait for the ushers to dismiss your row. See you next week. Lord,